Yes, it is finally here. We have USB flash drive support for the iPhone. iOS 13 brings files integration, meaning you can transfer files to and from a USB flash drive. So in this video, we're gonna take a first look at this new feature. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And I do that through tips and tricks and tutorial videos just like this one. So if that's your bag, consider subscribing. Now to say that USB flash drive support has been a long awaited feature would be an understatement. Let's be honest, it's been available on other phones and other platforms for a long time, but we now have it as part of iOS 13 on the iPhone and it will be coming soon to the iPad as part of iPad OS. So watch out for another video where I'll test this feature on an iPad. But for now, let's show you what we'll be testing and what we'll need to set up to get this done. Now the key piece of gear we're going to need to get this done is this, a lightning to USB adapter. This is the Apple lightning to USB 3 adapter. It allows us to plug in a USB device and it also has a lightning charger port so that we can keep our iPhone charged at the same time and then we connect the other end into our iPhone. So I've got videos about this linked up the top and there'll be links to where you can pick one of these up in the description if you don't already have one. You can use non-Apple ones, your mileage is going to vary. So I recommend the genuine ones. They are certified. They work 100% of the time. So let's now jump in and show you how we set up and plug in our USB devices. So let's quickly show the setup here. I've got my iPhone 10s here. I've got iOS 13 installed. So if you don't have iOS 13, go to your settings and check for an update and install iOS 13. I've got it in dark mode here, as you can see, and I'm in the files app. So I can check out all my files and I've got other videos showing you how to use the files app. It hasn't changed that much. I can go to my iCloud drive like that. I can go to on my iPhone and see all of my different locations like that. But what we wanna do now is actually plug in in a USB flash drive into our lightning port and see how we go. So firstly, we need our lightning to USB adapter. So that's gonna plug into our lightning port, ready to go. And now we can attach our USB flash drive and drum roll, see what's gonna happen. And here is one I prepared earlier. This is a flash drive with a photo, a video, and an audio file on there, just so that we can show some of the different document types that you may want to be adding to your iPhone. So let's plug this in now and see how we go. Okay, moment of truth. We'll grab our USB flash drive. We're gonna plug it into our lightning to USB adapter and... This accessory requires too much power. Here is the problem is that a lot of USB devices require more power than especially an iPhone can provide. The advantage we have is that because we have the lightning to USB 3 adapter here with its lightning port, we can actually plug this into either a mobile battery or into a power socket and we can get some additional power in here which should power up this USB drive. So let's add some power to this and give it another shot. So let's bring our power into the mix. We'll plug in our lightning cable there, gives it a little buzz. And now let's see if we have any success. There it is. It's called about time. We'll tap on there and there you go. You can see that we can jump straight in and start looking at these files and start transferring them. Now let's jump over into the screen recording so that you get a bit of a better view now that you've seen the setup and how we've got this configured here from the hardware side. So let's jump into the fun stuff. I'm here in the files app on my iPhone XS. I'm going to plug in the USB flash drive using the setup that you just saw there. And what should happen here is it should pop straight up just like this. And now we can use this USB flash drive called About Time for <clears throat> no particular reason to actually transfer files. So if we tap that, here we go. I've got three files in here. I've got a video file, an image file, and I've even got a folder here with an audio file. So I just wanted to test out whether we could use file structures here and how they would look and they look just like that. So that is all very cool. But what if we want to now transfer files from this USB drive over to our iPhone? That is what we're going to show you now. So what we need to do here is tap the select button here in the top right corner, and then we need to select our file. So let's do this image file first. So we're gonna tap on the image file there. Now down the bottom here, we've got five different options. We can share, we can duplicate, we can copy, we can delete, and we've got our more options. Now what you're gonna use most of the time is the copy option because we wanna copy this file from our USB flash drive over to our iPhone. So let's tap copy. 
And now we can choose the location we want to copy this to. So here in our files app, we have everything that we can copy to. We've got our iCloud drive here and any of the folders there. We've got our on my iPhone, which is any of the folders directly on the iPhone, plus any other locations. If you want to learn more about files and locations and all the great things in the files app, check out the video above or at the end of this one for more information. But for now, let's just go to on my iPhone and say we wanted to bring this one into our LumaFusion folder here. So we want to jump this over into our user media folder here in LumaFusion, we can just select a folder, we'll just put it into our iCloud Drive folder in LumaFusion, we'll tap copy, and there you go, it's going to copy that directly over into our user folder in LumaFusion. So if I was doing video editing and I wanted to bring in this image file, it's now over there ready to go. Let's do another one now, we've got a video file here. So if we select again, we tap the video file there. Now let's do another way this time. Instead of copying, what if we wanted to share this and use our share sheet? So we'll tap in the bottom left to bring up the share options here. And here you'll see our familiar screen where we can share this directly to any of the apps that we have set up to share to, or we've got some other options down here. We can copy it, we can save the video, save to Dropbox, save to files and do a bunch of other things. So the cool thing here is that we can save this video directly to our camera roll, and that means that we can then use it directly on our iPhone. So if we tap this one, save video, it's going to go away and save that to our camera roll. And that is now done. As soon as it pops back to this screen, you know that that's done and that's there ready to use on our camera roll. So let's go in with one final example with an audio file. So this time I have a folder here. I've got this music folder. If I tap on that, there is my audio file. So I could select this and use the same method if I wanted to share just that one file. But if I want to share a whole folder of files, then it's just as simple. All I need to do is tap select, tap on the folder, and then once again, hit the copy button down in the middle here directly below. I can now transfer this whole folder. It's only got one file, but if it had more, I could transfer all of these. Now, say I wanted to put this into my audio share files. I can select audio share there, tap the copy button, and there you go, it's going to transfer that whole folder over. If we wanna see where that goes, we'll tap locations in the top left, and if we go to our audio share files here, what we're gonna see is there it is, there's that music folder. So this is gonna make it simple if you've got a folder full of documents or audio files or video files on your USB drive, you can transfer that whole folder across and you can use it right here. So that is how we can actually access and transfer files from our USB drive over to our iPhone or to our iCloud drive or any other location here in files. What about if we wanna send some files to our USB drive? Let's show you that now. So the process is basically exactly the same. We're gonna go this time, let's just go into our GarageBand folder here and here's some audio files. So we've just got some compressed audio files here. What if I wanted to send some of these, we'll do a few at a time this time, over to that flash drive. Well, I'm gonna tap select and this time, let's just say I wanted all five of these files. I'm gonna tap them one by one and then down the bottom here, I'm gonna tap on that familiar copy button here we go, five items ready to be copied. Now you can see I've got my about time USB drive here ready to go. So what if I just wanted to put these into this music folder? I tap on that folder in the top right corner, I hit copy, and there it goes. It's gonna give me that little spinning icon. It's gonna copy those files over to about time. Now, you might be looking at this at the moment going, what about speed? And as you can see, this was only five pretty small files and it is taking a bit of time. So because it's a USB 2 flash drive that I'm using here and it's gotta copy it over, it's not the fastest thing in the world. And when we do the next test, which I'm gonna show you, which is some larger video files from an SLR camera, you're gonna see that, yeah, it's not the perfect solution for those transfers. Anyway, that has now been done. We'll go back to on my iPhone and we'll go back to our locations because what we can now do is actually go and find those files. So again, if we go down here, we go to about time and we go to this music folder, boom, there they all are in there ready to go. So now all we need to do is plug this USB drive into our Mac or our PC. We've got a backup copy of these files. We can use them, share them, transfer them. So that is pretty cool. Yes, I know it's a simple function and we should have had it a long time ago, but we have it now and it's cool and it means that we can plug in our USB flash drives and use them here in iOS.
Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you're using something like a GarageBand project file, like the ones that we have here, they are in a proprietary format that will not be compatible with your USB flash drive. So what you need to do before you transfer these or back these up is zip them up. And I've got a complete video showing how to do this, which does need to be updated now for iOS 13, but that'll be linked up the top and in the description. But what we can do, if we tap the select button here, we can tap on this project file, hold on. Now, if we tap the share button in the bottom left, so we'll tap on that one, then we get these familiar options again. But if we scroll to the bottom, we've got our shortcuts set up here, our zip and our unzip shortcuts that I've set up in that previous video I mentioned. So if I tap on zip, what it's going to do is it's going to actually grab this file. There it is. It's zipped it up. It's put all 15 files there into one zip file. We hit done in the top left corner. It's now going to zip it up and ask us where we want to put it. So here's the beauty part. Now that we have our USB flash drive, we can put it directly onto there. So let's hit save in the top right corner and it will go away. And again, it's going to take a little time because the file transfer speeds aren't going to be amazing, especially like I said, with a USB 2 flash drive that I'm using here. So we'll wait a moment for that to finish saving. And then once that is done, we'll be able to access that directly here on the USB flash drive. When we bring it back in, we follow the exact same process, but in reverse. I'll show you that in just a moment. So that is done now. It took about 30 seconds total. So we'll go back to our locations by tapping back, come down here to our USB flash drive. And now there it is, hold on dot zip. So that is good to go. Now, if you then had some other zip files that you wanted to bring on to your iPhone, what you can do is the exact same thing in reverse. We're going to tap select here. We're going to select this file that's here on my USB flash drive. In the bottom left, we'll tap the share button. We'll scroll down to the bottom of this. And yes, you guessed it. We're going to tap on unzip. And now we get the exact same thing, but in reverse. It's going to go away and extract it. There it is. It says, yep, you've got a GarageBand project. You're good to go. We'll tap done in the top left corner and it will ask us, where do you want to put this? So just because we got it from on my iPhone, let's say we wanted to put this in my iCloud drive and in this GarageBand iOS folder here. Now we just tap save in the top right corner. It does its save thing and it's saving it as a GarageBand.band project file that is going to be compatible. And just to show you how that works, we'll come out of here. We'll go into iCloud drive. We'll go into GarageBand here and we'll come down and we'll find, hold on. I've got too many files here. Uh, Yes, I, I thought I saw it before. There it is. Hold on version two. It's waiting to upload. It's because I already had something called hold on there. But yep, it's good to go. We can tap on that and it's going to open it up directly into GarageBand. Uh, we'd like to use Bluetooth. Uh, okay. And there we go. There's our project file. So if you had that, if someone had gave, given you that on a USB drive and then you brought it in, it was a zip, you can unzip it and you'll be good to go just like that. Now, one final test before we finish up here. You would have seen at the start I was holding up an SD card USB reader. So what I'm going to do is I've got my SD card from my DSLR camera and I've put that in the reader and I've plugged that in. Here it is. It's called Untitled. If we tap on this one, this will be familiar for those of you using digital cameras. This is the sort of folder structure that you have on an SD card. So this is just showing you that we can directly access our SD cards by plugging them in. Again, you will still need that power because your card readers are going to use too much power for your iPhones most of the time. But let's jump in here, go into the DCIM folder. You can see I've added in some extra stuff in here um, that I've been using. But if we tap the 100 Canon folder, then here we are. Here's all of my image files. And this is where making sure that you have uh, some good file management is a good idea because you can see here I've got a bunch of stuff. But what I wanted to show you is that the file transfer speed is not super quick. So let's just choose this 1.2 gig file in the bottom right corner and we'll just use our same method again. We'll tap select. We'll tap on the folder there. Let's copy it using the center button down the bottom here. And if we wanted to put this onto our uh, on my iPhone, so let's say we wanted to bring this across into our LumaFusion folder. So we wanted to bring this in, put it into our user media folder. Uh, we'll just throw it in, uh, in there into the iCloud drive and then we'll tap copy in the top right corner. It's going to go away and copy it, but 
this will take probably around a minute to two minutes for this one gigabyte file. So you can see here that if you were transferring a bunch of four gigabyte files, if you had maybe an hour's worth of footage, it's not going to be the quickest way. It's going to be easy and convenient, but it's not going to be super quick just because of the speed of the USB 2 port that we have there. So I just wanted to show this. You can use this in exactly the same way. If you want an alternative way, I really like using the Wi-Fi drive option in Audio Share. So check out the video linked up the top and in the description if you want to learn how to use the Wi-Fi drive. I still find it quicker and more convenient to just plug my SD card into my PC and then transfer it across using Wi-Fi drive. But if you were out and about and you only had your SD card and your card reader and you wanted to get your images onto your phone, this is 100% a great way to do it. So there you go, that is done. We can then go back to our locations, come in here. I don't know why I keep nesting things <laughs> in such uh, low folders, but we'll go to LumaFusion. We'll go to our user media here. We'll go to our iCloud Drive, which is somewhere. I'm missing it. There it is. And yes, again, I've got all of these different uh, files in here, but there is that 1.2 gigabyte file there, ready to go, ready to use here on my phone. So yes, it's a simple way to do it, but yeah, keep in mind that the speed limitations are gonna be there, but you know what? It is just so cool. And if you're wondering what files you can put in here, basically anything that will be supported by the Apple iOS infrastructure. So if you've got documents, if you've got spreadsheets, as long as you've got an app on your phone, that is going to open them, then they can be supported. And if in doubt, like we did with our GarageBand folders and GarageBand files, zip them up and then you can unzip them and that will make sure that they're going to be fully compatible when you copy them across. So there you have it, USB flash drive support is here in iOS on the iPhone. Now, if you do want to pick up a Lightning to USB 3 adapter, check the links down in the description. If you've got other comments or questions about connecting USB devices to your iOS device, leave those down in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.